Again, good morning. Uh, I would like to raise an idea which has been realized partially, which is combining uh, shelter, house building with energy and food. A holistic system which under one envelope produces everything we need on a very small footprint. And uh, you have seen at the beginning I show, gave you the PowerPoint presentation of our energy power greenhouses and I have shown in a specific installation in the northern latitude that we were capable to produce in Germany in winter time but right outside we have snow, mangoes and bananas. Only with a radiant energy which we had collected during the summer and which we used now during winter to heat a greenhouse, but the light coming in was a winter light which made photosynthesis. And I want to generalize this. Generalize this. We can also show that we can build such an enclosement in a desert climate when it is outside 50 degree hot and inside we will have wonderful temperatures like in springtime and the exact amount of light and so we can build general principle if you go on earth we have temperature differences maybe from minus 40 to plus 50 degrees centigrade the extremas hmm? and that means that we have to shelter ourselves, that's the reason we need houses. And these houses are enclosing a smaller space in which by technical energy uh, we are creating a climate which has not the fluctuations minus 40 to plus 50, which is hopefully attenuating or giving a straight climate, which is the American style, you build in air conditioners, we are, which are at the same time uh, heaters and you want to have 21 degree constant. And this is one of the reasons that you require about 50% of the world's energy is going into these shelters, into these housings. And in new time, uh, the most modern is the so-called passive energy house where you come to the conclusion that if, if you are I'm very schematically showing this if you are in wrapping your house in a massive, massive, massive isolation hmm? and if you have inside people and every one of us be he sleeping or working in the average, he is giving up 100 watts of heat. And uh, if the isolation is chosen so good that a family of five persons with half a kilowatt constant heating power um, is heating this house, evidently you need no longer uh, a classical heating system. However, you need a window to come in with light, you need warm water for showering, you need electricity, consequently you build on this house PV panels, uh, warm water panels to do all this. It's one way to do it. Uh, forgot important point, if we are as living beings, we are using the air, huh? so we have after a certain while uh, it is filled full with CO2 and no longer O2 inside. So this used warm air must go out and instead, that's the main trick of passive solar houses, instead of letting also the heat out in a counter flow heat exchanger, we are extracting the heat content of this used air uh, with fresh air coming in. So you can make a house practically energy independent, but 
it's a little bit like living in a submarine huh? mm -hmm. because uh, you are forced to close everything and only sometimes to open a little bit the window. Some people like it, so it's a question. It's, it's a big progress in terms of energy. Uh, so the idea I'm going to present you is now another one. Since I told you that inside of envelopes, we are going to speak a little bit about it, since half an hour is not much, but principles. Uh, an envelope is, can, I, uh, I am choosing this shape, can be rectangular, can every geometry, hmm? uh, is a system which receives from the outside 100% of solar energy. And I should have mentioned that on an average house of 100 square meter roof surface in Germany, uh, we have uh, per square meter and years the solar energy equivalent of 120 liters of oil. So we have 12,000 12, liters of oil. We are rejecting with our thick, uh, opaque uh, isolations. We are not using it. We are diminishing by the method I explained, the energy need, uh, but we are a little bit in a prison. Uh, an envelope is doing something else. It is letting through in a timely, controllable, uh, manner, more or less of this energy. We can block it completely, then it will be dark inside, we can let all inside, then we can't look in. For the light reasons we have 100,000 looks, but we can also have the 2,000 looks which are comfortable for eyes, and we can have the 200 watts per square meter which are good for the plants. And this is due to the fact, as I explained, when outside the weather fluctuations are like this, temperature fluctuations, by controlling the energy stream inside, we are attenuating this. So, the idea is simply to say, to build a house in a house. Now I have, if I, am, if I would live, in a climate in which my temperature changes are uh, infinitely low, controllable. And uh, if I would have no wind forces on my house, no rain, no hail, then I could build, in principle, a house of paper. And uh, I would be sheltered, I would uh, open a window when I want, and exactly this condition is existing inside of a first envelope. Hmm? And we have developed those envelopes. Uh, one technical aspect I must point out now, because I think it's extremely important. From a technical standpoint of view, how could such an envelope look like? We have developed out of existing vacuum tube collectors. They are completely transparent. Hmm? And they are used, you can see them also here in our show box. Hmm? They are used in the way that you have inside in the vacuum. Vacuum is therefore here inside because if you have no air, the heat produced on a solar collector fin I just designed here cannot, by convection, losing energy. And if you have a good selective coating, I'm not going deeper here, such a system will heat up to 200 degrees centigrade and still have about 40% of efficiency at this. And we could reach over 300 degrees at the stagnation. Why I'm telling this? Such tubes cost nearly nothing. In China, they are produced, if you uh, bring it to the square meter, $20. And we have managed that this inner 
absorber is pivotable, can turn. So if we turn it in this, perpendicular to the sun, all the light comes in. That's the condition our envelope lets all light through. If we want partially of it, we incline it. If we want to block all the energy, we bring it perpendicular. So we control two things. Three things. First, the energy flux, which can be 100% technical energy. And uh, there I don't have to explain much. You have seen a sun pulse engine, which requires this heat when we have stored it. And Olivier just showed you we can do electricity, mechanical energy, pumping, cooling, everything you need in our house with it. So all, all the time we have too much energy which is the case in summer, which is the case nearly always in uh, Israel, to take the example. Uh, we let just as much light in, it's not completely dark, that we feel very comfortable. And the energy is stored and can be transformed uh, day and night. Secondly, um, since we have a structure which is vacuum isolated. We have nearly no heat transmission if it's very hot outside to the inner, nor have we, if it is very cold outside in the other climatic condition in winter, a heat flux from here. That means now we replace this relatively dumb, I say, um, idea to isolate a passive house. The isolation is a good part about it, but the non-transmission of light is a bad part. And uh, by combining the two things and having vacuum, we have a super isolated first uh, house, the outer envelope, producing all the energy in a controllable way. Of course, you could ask why are we building houses with such big isolation? Many, many answers, biologic material and so on, I understand. But of course, uh, there was also the question, why are we not vacuum isolating our houses? And so German companies like ThyssenKrupp steel companies started to produce panels of steel plates, thin steel plates, with some space holders and evacuate it and they uh, offer it to the building industry for 800 euros per square meter. Oh. So you can forget it. <laughs> and so the unique chance of this idea we just present, it's very strange uh, that it had not been discovered by the building engineers. It was just when we were last year in the Passive House conference. But matter of fact, we can buy them, they are first class, uh, environmental material, glass, uh, uh, they have uh, this wonderful capacity so we can build an envelope which is doing, which be, makes out of the house now sitting inside. I will speak a little bit about this and uh, the other principles. Make out of this, of a passive energy house, a plus 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 energy house. It's a power station. And since we already know uh, that it's not only a power station, it is a fantastic possibility to grow under the best conditions plants uh, by, uh, I explained about the embedded possibilities uh, to create the path spectrum for the plants and all those things. This is all uh, embedded or embedded. Huh? can be a modular system. Having said this, so I, I will speak in the following only about this outer envelope. Hmm? There are other possibilities, many others I would have liked to spoke, speak about because uh, there are possibilities uh, to add to this outer skin a convective part which is uh, taking care of the moisture of the air and which is producing water, everything you need.
uh, that's, this is not possible in this time. So let's stay in this general picture. And now let's say this be an envelope. And inside we build a house, can be an igloo, can be every configuration. So in our little test lab in a, as a garden center in Germany, our office is already built like this. We are sitting inside the first skin, which is controlling again the light pace in a controllable way, which is extracting the energy won by this, bringing it to a storage, producing more heat than we ever would need inside. So, uh, and via engine producing electricity, cooling, whatever we need inside. So it becomes energetically self-sufficient. But what we like most now for the quality of life is that when we come out of the door of the house in house, we are in a garden. Because here we have the climate in which we do exactly what we do in our envelope power greenhouses. can be just uh, for fun, nice plants, but can be also the food basis of the family or the people living here. That we have shown, and we have shown uh, together with our Australian friends that if this is an aquaponic system. Uh, we need 20 square meter of surface here, of the first envelope, to feed one person. That means, uh, you see that the correlation, if you have a, a house for five people, let's say we have 100 square meter here, so we have more than enough space to produce I speak theoretically, I don't say now that we should do it completely, but this is a possibility to create in a completely embedded, um, selectively transparent, highly isolating glass um, envelope. Inside we can create crop, we can create fish, and we can create enough with a minimum of land and with a minimum of uh, energetic input, which will be completely um, um, brought by our active system, we can become completely energy and food independent. That's what we say. And uh, of course, uh, having in mind the discussion from yesterday, Many people will say, oh, but this is violating the nature, but then I, I, your comment, and I, I, I'm on your side, I'm more a Jain. <laughs> the Jain people say, what we do outside, we should let the nature like it is. And we should go very careful <laughs> over the soil. And uh, here we should be more hunters or nomades outside and inside is our shelter. And of course, uh, we have mainly uh, had these ideas for the parts of the world which are arid and semi-arid. Because if you are once in such a region, you know how difficult it is uh, to build really green gardens in the arid zones. I hope I could bring over the difference between the today favorized passive solar house building and this because what I didn't say, you know, when I said I feel imprisoned in a, in a passive solar house is a little bit unfair because the architects we know they build wonderful houses and uh, you feel not bad in it. But nevertheless, uh, the fact remains the main energy you have is it human energy by activity and the used air which is rechanged 
whilst we have from the outside an abundance of energy. So since we have such an abundance of energy, much more heat than we ever would need, much more cooling than we ever would need if we close uh, this envelope. Of course, the outer envelope has openings for air and so on. So we can easily say, okay, today we open everything. I want to be in the air current. We produce so much that is, we have surplus. Don't forget, we have, uh, if this would be maybe 200 square meter usable surface, hmm? uh, in principle, uh, we can uh, produce for 10 people the food and we use energy in the extent, going now in a sunny country, that would be uh, 200 square meter. Yes, it is. Uh, about mm -hmm, 30,000 liters of oil per year equivalent. Usable, not just radiation, transformed into hot water or oil, transformed with air-filled machines into all power needs we have. So this is the idea. A lot, of course, I'm not an architect and not a good drawer. I'm always <laughs> So, I admire Olivier doing very nice. <laughs> I'm too impatient for this. <laughs> uh, but uh, these elements, which will be built by our friend Klaus Langner in Australia, they can be used in so various ways. Now I give you, at the end, some little examples. Many houses in USA, but also in Europe, are, are equipped with so-called uh, winter gardens. Conservatory, I think you say it in English. Huh? And these winter gardens are beautiful because uh, people can go out, they sit in the light, they see everything, and they are no longer in, in, in this, insofar a conservatory or winter garden is a little house, house system but not in this geometry. But there's a hell of problems. The moment the sun comes, <laughs> they have to need to heat, heat up. So, uh, and um, therefore, imagine you build such conservatories with, with this uh, vacuum panels. We imagine, uh, at the moment, I think they are one meter 80 long. Huh? Maybe we build panels one meter eighty long and two or three meters large, that will have to be decided. All the tubes sitting in a wooden frame, so they are nicely protected. And we can build a conservatory like this. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Imagine you are uh, the owner of a restaurant in Indonesia, it's typical, but you find all over in Asia, because we are near the equator, uh, the sun stands nearly perpendicular all the time, plus min minus 23 and a half degrees, and therefore they build restaurants with shadow roofs, huh? in transparent shadow roofs, hmm? and uh, pergolas, open to the sides. Now, then they have to buy a lot of gas to cook for their people. They need uh, for the fridge a lot of energy, so to say the costs for the restaurant owner is high. If we do it with an energy pergola, we, have, we are providing all the energy for cooking, day and night, all the electricity, all the cooling. And uh, you don't need uh, the electric illumination they have, because most of the sun comes from here, Maybe we have the controllable light inside. That's a perfect, a simple um, thing. If you are going into, uh, Bori pointed it out, that we should think about towns. So we look what happens. We are building skyscrapers with hundreds of meters of glass facades. Huh? and uh, causing a hell of heating, by mm. the way. <laughs> so you need so much more air conditioning. So if you use such elements, you make real power stations out. 
all by having better interior conditions, and so on. So, by combining it, coming back, the house in house idea, ID, and now uh, with structural elements for the inner house and maybe also for the windows of the outer envelope uh, should be combined with biomaterial, with renewable, wonderful building materials, and uh, was also already pointed out. Janos has done pioneering works, wonderful. We can't wait until bringing such things together. And also B is doing this. And uh, there it's also clear, you know, in the simplest form, uh, because you have no weather intemperies inside them, huh? you can build just a straw house. <laughs> of course, you will bring a little bit uh, of plaster on it, looks better, but you don't fear anymore all those things. 